first question is um, I would like to refer you to the well-known scientific theory of the bird song is in the eye of the beholder. How in your research did you account for a variation of human song preferences within your data? I mean, that is a, a very good question. So No, it isn't. <laughs> <laughs> No so I think it is uh, very fair in the research to look at, uh, you know, human beings and their reaction to the sounds. We actually conducted quite a lot of research in um, having lots of different humans respond to the sounds of birds, and we found that's actually quite staggering. There is a universal reaction to the sound of squeaking and squawking uh, that, is, that is all the same, which is a repulsion, really. Uh, humans find most of the bird sounds, I, I think we've uh, counted 300 disgusting sounding birds on our list and it seems that human beings uh, respond to these sounds uh, in exactly the same way. It is cross-cultural, uh, wow. cross-generational, uh, it just seems like it's an innate human response to bird sounds, which is it's quite interesting and quite, uh, quite separate to uh, how we view human sounds. So that's quite interesting. Most impressive, mm. yes. Yeah, it seems quite solid. Now, my question is, um, have you heard my program that is being broadcast tomorrow? <laughs> no, I haven't, I'm sorry. How can you expect to win the Malcolm Roberts Steaming Bullshit Award for Shameless Mendacity then? <laughs> because if you were to concentrate on my program tomorrow, you would mm. hear that two women from Deakin University have shown that zebra finches, which are Australian, sing to their eggs, and their eggs respond. <laughs> What's your opinion of that revelation published in the wow. Journal of Science? <clears throat> well, I mean, that is uh, very interesting. Um, a lot of the work that um, we kind of uh, worked off was Charles Darwin's work on the finches. So he mm. looked at finches and, and he actually theorized that uh, bird vocalization was selected for um, because of sexual selection, because he saw that only male birds vocalized. But then in 2014, uh, Dr. Naomi Langmore from the Australian National University disproved this theory and found out that 71% of females uh, can vocalize as well, proving that there is no uh, sexual impetus for birds to vocalize. So it is actually quite interesting that it was probably the, the female birds that were singing to their eggs, which would probably Both. defend... Okay, a very interesting. Would probably <laughs> defend uh, Naomi's research the there. The other females were tweeting. <laughs> uh, so it, it seems that uh, both uh, birds and humans alike enjoy tweeting. Uh, but I, I must say, this is something that you know we haven't uncovered in our research. And if you know we were to be granted further uh, mm. funding, we would definitely. <laughs> uh, we would definitely look into into the birds tweeting at their eggs. Um, Victoria, I found this to be an outstanding piece of work. Obviously, very thoroughly thoroughly researched. Um, sound mathematical um, mm. analysis, no pun intended. Um, my question to you is that, uh, given these results, have you thought about extending this theory to other animals? Oh, well, absolutely. So we just focus primarily on uh, human judgmentalism and vocalization. Um, this may be extended into further species if we want to focus on sound. For example, it might explain why crickets uh, make that cricket sound they do. Um, um, I think there's also a lot of research to be done in aesthetic judgments um, from visual stimuli, so the aesthetics of how animals look and to see uh, how humans select for or against uh, these animals depending on how handsome they are to the human species. So I think there is a lot of research to be done in that field. I, I again, am just a specialist in, in vocalization and human judgment, but that's not to be said that there isn't uh, a breath of research to be done outside. Well done. Thank you. That was Victoria Zerbs. How good was that? It's a very rigorous questioning by the judges. I hope all of the other contestants have used their time travel machines to see all the future work the judges have done that you're going to be questioned on. <laughs> Tricky stuff.